When you're a busy mum and often time poor, making and maintaining friendships can be a daunting task. This becomes an even greater challenge when you are living away from family and friends. You've got to start over again from scratch, finding new friends, new schools and community. Mum of two, connection mentor, coach and host of the Connecting Mum Life podcast, Emily Seagill, has experienced these challenges firsthand after moving into state on a number of occasions. This included a move shortly after she gave birth to her first child. Over the years, Emily has learned how to make friendships in new communities and she had a thriving community and is on a mission to help mums create more real life friendships. During our chat, you'll hear Emily talk about the five types of connections that every mum needs in a circle of friends and much more. I'm Helen Thompson and welcome to First Time Mums Chat. I'm a childcare educator and baby math arts instructor. I know that being a parent for the first time is challenging and changes your life in every way imaginable. To help ease your transition into parenthood, I aim to offer supportive, holistic approaches and insights for mums of babies aged mainly from four weeks to 10 months old. My goal is to assist you to become the most confident parent you can and smooth out the bumps along the way. This podcast is brought to you by My Baby Massage. To find out how Baby Massage can help you to increase your confidence and feel more connected with your baby, check out My Baby Massage introduction video at mybabymassage.net forward slash intro. Let's do this together. This podcast is for informational purposes only and does not constitute medical advice. Please contact a medical practitioner if you are concerned or have any medical issues. Hi Emily and welcome to First Time Mums Chat. I'm delighted to have you here today and talk about ways to help mums expand their circle of friends. Can you please start by telling us about your background and what you do? Yeah, thanks so much for having me. So like you mentioned, my name's Emily. I currently live in the States in Minnesota, and I have a just turned nine-year-old and an almost six-year-old, two boys. And we have moved around quite a bit over the years. Soon after getting married over a decade ago, me and my husband moved out to Pennsylvania, a different state in the United States. And then after five years of being there, we had our first kiddo, but then promptly moved again, this time to Texas. And we're there for probably eight years before just now returning again to Minnesota. Really, it feels like we're starting all over again with friends, a whole new school, a whole new community. We've got our family Yeah, just a lot of having to build community from scratch over and over, over the last 14 years. I've learned (laughs) quite a lot about making friends in adulthood, and that has ultimately led me to having my own podcast where I talk about the importance of friendship and community for moms and really encouraging moms in that. Yeah, it's your podcast called the Connected Mom Life Podcast. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah, I've listened to some of your episodes. It's interesting. Thank you. I love talking about finding a village because when you move a lot, it's really hard for any mum to find new friends when they move. That can be a challenge. So you've moved a lot of times. So how have you managed to find friends? I'll say the first time when we moved again, and this was without kids, we were just two young married people who thought it'll be easy to make friends. And we found that not to be the case. And that set me out a little bit on a journey of, wait, why isn't this easy? Is this really me or what is happening here? Mm -hmm. Through that time, I really came to learn a lot about how in a lot of ways we grow up thinking friends just happen. But the truth is that school really just happened to us. Consistency just Mm -hmm. happened to us. And it actually takes a little bit different effort in adulthood and I just kept thinking, well, everybody else seems set on friends. I think I'm just the weird one in this boat. (laughs) I ultimately learned during that first move that that was not true, that people were very much more open to connection than I had initially realized. 
And so when we moved the second time and had a baby, a four month old, that knowledge was so helpful for me because it allowed me to just kind of like put myself out there pretty quickly once we got to our new spot with just a lot more confidence than I probably would have had if that had been our first move. I hadn't fully realized that people were actually open to connection, even if they didn't seem overly eager or anything like that. So that's really what I did this with our second move. I had a baby. And so I looked for places that were open to moms yeah, and babies, yeah. whether that was breastfeeding support groups or new mom meetups or things like that, a workout group that you could work out with your stroller. That was the whole premise of the workout. Kids were invited. And so I just looked for opportunities that I could take a baby to that other adults might be at so mm -hmm. that I could get some adult connection too, because oh my gosh, we all know babies are just all consuming with their needs. I mean, the smiles are great, but you know, you want to talk to someone. <laughs> yeah. You want to talk to an adult as well at yeah. times. It's lovely having your baby, but sometimes you feel stuck and you just want to be able to get out and being able to do that and meet new friends is sometimes a little bit harder when you're stuck at the house all the time. Oh yeah, for sure. So I would say that was the best thing I did was I just decided on a few different places that I knew I would be meeting other moms in a similar season to me with young babies. And I just committed to showing up most of the time, even when I didn't want to go. And that's really kind of how I slowly start to, to build that village. And the question I have on that is, how do you transform that from an acquaintance to a friend? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's the hard part, right? It's not that hard to meet people. It is definitely harder to then move that to that next level. So what I would say is something that really helped me when I was showing up, particularly to that workout group where it was moms and babies day after day, honestly, you could have worked out five days a week if you wanted to. And when I first went, I showed up and I say what everyone says, it felt like everybody already knew each other. It just kind of felt like these moms have all been coming here for a while. They clearly have some inside jokes. They clearly know kind of what's going on in each other's lives. And I really felt like an outsider. I'm so glad I had committed to showing up because I was like, you know what? These people feel good to me. They feel like people I could be friends with. Mm -hmm. I just need some time. So I just committed to keep showing up and to being like, yes, they are interested in knowing who you are and being friends with you and kind of like moving through that just mindset piece. And it was so great. Literally after two months, which can feel like a long time for sure. I was like, oh wait, no, I'm the one welcoming new moms. Yes. I know what's going on with people's lives. <clears throat> I think I actually belong here. I think it's just, as you say, showing up and giving mm -hmm. yourself the time yeah. friendship as a new mom because giving yourself that time is so important you can get stuck in that rut and going out and meeting people when you've got a baby or any child I think is so important mm -hmm. yeah and it's hard too you don't say it so flippantly oh it's so easy to just mm. go out and put yourself out there that's probably why I looked for opportunities that just met me in my current season one of the other groups I joined when I was a new mom, it was truly called a new mom's group. And it was through like an app called Meetup where like-minded groups would gather. So we would gather and we all had babies. So we would just get creative. Like we're going to meet at this park and we're all going to walk with our babies in a stroller. We also would meet at malls that had open space and we would bring blankets and just sit around and lay our babies on blankets and that only lasted for probably three to six months because then our baby started moving and that yeah, wasn't yeah. working. And so we had to adjust and pivot. It was so helpful just to be with other people who were just in the thick of it and understood mm -hmm. what I was going through and could talk to me about breastfeeding for three hours nonstop. Some of my other friends in my life were like, oh yeah, I think I did this. And they're done wanting to talk about it. There's just something to talking with people who are in the thick of what you're going through. Yeah, a lot of your friends, when you become a mum, if they're not a mother themselves, they don't mm -hmm. connect. They don't yeah. want to have child activities. 
they just mm-hmm. want to have time with you without the kid and that's sometimes not that easy yeah exactly so what are your five types of connection that you feel every mom needs in a village yeah so when I think about my village I usually tend to place priority on those same season friends especially if I find myself in a new place and have no Mm -hmm. one in my village and I need to start from scratch. I tend to place my emphasis there on other people who are very much what I call same season friends. They're Mm -hmm. very much going through a similar life experience to me. So for example, when we moved the first time and I had a four month old, I looked for other moms that had babies. Now this move, I've moved with an eight and a five year old I'm looking for moms of elementary school kids or primary school kids. Yes, yes. My focus has shifted based on the season I'm in. Like I said earlier, same season friends are great because they're in the thick of what you're going through. You can Mm -hmm. just relate on a really different level. So that's one of the friends I think we need in our village. The second friend I call a different season friend. And it's those friends who are in a different season. I used to joke all the time about our first time mom's group that I was in, that it was the blind leading the blind. That's a very good point. Yeah. Some of the questions we would ask in our group and the advice we would give each other, it wasn't that it was bad advice, but we were all just kind of like, I don't know. I think this is working. This other mom told me this. So we're all just kind of throwing that at each other. And so I actually really find having different season friends really helpful. So That could be moms who are ahead of you with their kids' years. I find it so helpful to talk to moms who are sometimes just a little bit ahead of me. I also love being connected to moms who are way further ahead of me and can just help me keep some solid perspective on what Mm. I'm freaking out a little bit about whatever season or stage we're in with the kids. I also deeply, deeply appreciate and value my friends who do not have kids I have found that they also can provide such good perspective sometimes on who you are outside of your kids, because sometimes that can get a little lost. I have also found my friends who have not had children have been so gracious with me in the sense of they can come to me after my kids are in bed and hang out with me, even though I'm trapped at my house. Mm. Um, So they have like a little bit of different flexibility. I always try to be mindful and make sure that the It's not always one-sided by any means, but different season friends can bring you a lot of really valuable perspective as well. Yeah, I think that's true. I definitely get that one. Yeah. And I always like to share that one too, because I know so many people without kids think, oh, well, they don't want to invite me anymore. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I would love it. If you want to love on my kids, that would make my day. And also if you just want to come over after they go to bed and keep me company, That will make my day in a different way. Hmm. The third friend, and I'm going to use friend loosely here, but I would definitely consider this a connection for your village, are neighbors. So just having people nearby that you feel like you can trust and support or potentially even ask for help is just a game changer, knowing that you're not fully on your own wherever you are. So I always take time to really be intentional when we move to know the homes around us. This last move was probably the best we've ever done. We've moved three times and I've only done this one time, but I will do this again and again if we ever move. We went around at the holidays and we had made these potpourri in a jar and it was stovetop potpourri where you could put it on the stovetop and simmer it and it would make your house smell lovely. And they were so easy to put together. They were inexpensive to put together. We made like 20 of these and I want to say it took less than 20 minutes. It was so easy and I'm not crafty. So I always like to tell people that. Then I made just a little note card that I typed up and it said, we're new. We're looking forward to getting to know you. And then I wrote our names, our ages, our contact information, like our cell phones and our emails. And we went around all the houses Most people ended up not being home the day we went around and it was so cold where we are. So we just dropped them on the doorstep. But then I got text messages the next day from everyone saying, oh, this is my name. We're so happy. We look forward to meeting you when the weather gets nice. It has been the best thing because I now have all of our neighbors' contact information. They have ours. 
we're a smallish neighborhood. So people care about kind of knowing who they live with, but it has been great. People are already using it to be like, oh, hey, I'm out of town and I saw I have a package. Could you grab it? So just kind of neighborly things without even knowing each other well. And so that's been really great to have that support system too. Yeah, that's a nice friendly thing to do. We have some new neighbors at Christmas time and they came around and gave all the neighbors chocolate, which I thought was really nice. Yeah, so. it's lovely. I lead a community of moms who are pursuing in real life friendships. And I think they wanted to go around and give cookies at the holidays, but then they were starting to overthink it. What if they're gluten-free or they don't want to eat mm. sugar or all the things And I'm like, you don't have to worry about that. The gift is in the giving is kind of what I like to remind people about. You don't have to worry if they're going to eat them or throw them away. The gift has served its purpose. People just love that you thought of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. So the three so far, same season, different season, neighbors. And then the final two are, I call them work friends. Whether you have a typical nine to five corporate job, or if you are a stay-at-home mom, Having people that are doing similar work that you are doing in your life, I think are really helpful. There may be some crossover with same season there, but someone who's in the thick of it doing the same job that you are, I think can make a lot of our work feel more fun as well. Then that last friend I call the same interest friend, because at the end of the day, We all have different passions and things we could kind of deep dive and geek out on in life. Honestly, for me, it's nothing crazy. It's just different TV shows that I want to process with other friends. Just having people that like some of the same things you do. And there might be crossover with they also might be in the same season as you. I find that having kind of that bestie that can deep dive with you on all the surface level things as well as the deep things can be really fun. And you know this too, Helen, as podcasters, I have podcast friends. It's so nice to have other people that get some of the random things that we're into and challenges that surfaces for us too. I think you actually learned so much from other podcasters too, and you gleaned so much information from other podcasters. And the other one you mentioned with the work friends, I think that is a good one too, even if they don't have kids. So what are the new rules of making friendships in motherhood? Yeah. So the first one is that I think what so many of us don't realize initially is that people really are open to connection, even if, you know, it doesn't feel that way all the time. So I, I talk about one of the new rules that I like to follow in motherhood when it comes to making friends is that it's okay to be more forward. We watch our kids run around on a playground and walk up to different kids that look their size and they say, hey, do you want to be my friend? And they say, yeah. And then they run off and go play on the playground and it's the most beautiful thing. All of the adults look at each other and we say, oh, I wish it was that easy for us as adults. And I think it can be. I don't know that you have to go up to a mom that you meet at the playground and say, hi, I'm looking for friends. Do you want to be friends? You can be pretty forward. Some of the conversations I love to have when I meet another mom that has a kid roughly my kid's age is I usually open the conversation as I'm running after a toddler and just say, oh my goodness, like these kids are crazy today. Kind of smile, just show that I'm open to conversation. And then if it works out to have a conversation, I do. If it's going well, I'll say, do you have a lot of friends around here? Or are you from around here? Just to kind of get a sense if they have a really big village or if they're newer. And a lot of times you can kind of gauge how open someone is to connection. I will often, because I was working um, pretty heavily when I had my littles, that I would often say to people, oh, well, the park is always more fun when there's other kids here. Would you like to exchange numbers? And I could let you know the next time we're coming. It's just a really low pressure way to say, hey, this is always more fun with other kids. If we exchange contact information, I didn't just sign you up to be my best friend. I signed you up to let you know the next time I'd be at the park if you wanted to come in a very no pressure way. I will tell you, I have collected probably a hundred phone numbers that way. And it might feel a little awkward the first time you try it, but it gets so easy. And people are always like, oh yeah, sure. Great idea. So it's okay to be forward is a really, I think, important rule. 
Yeah, you mention kids are like that all the time. They're always chatting to other kids. So why can't we do it as mums? Yeah. Or even if you're a nanny or whatever and you want to meet new friends, if you're at the park with kids, just have a chat to that mum and say, oh, it, that's my little kid that you're, you're once run off with. Yeah, for sure. And then the second role is, so I, I mentioned earlier, we always think friends just happen, but really consistency is kind of what happened when we were growing up. So I like to encourage moms to think of phones as the new school playground. So kids get to meet every day at the school playground if they're in school. And we might not have that same setup with how our lives are rolling along, depending upon what we have going on, either with work or staying at home or how many kids, all the things. You asked earlier, how do you go from acquaintance to friend? The reality is that, you know, Sometimes we don't know when that shift happens. We don't quite catch it. All of a sudden we're like, oh my gosh, I think we're friends. A lot of times ways that you can nurture that and almost create your own level of consistency is through the phone. So that could be as simple as maybe you follow each other on social media and you comment on their posts or like Mm. their posts. Even something as simple as that makes someone like you. It makes them feel good about you because you are seeing them, you're acknowledging, you're seeing what's going on in their life. You can obviously text, you could send funny memes, but you can stay kind of in touch in the in-between moments, particularly as you're nurturing a newer connection. And that can really help to speed it up, to get to that friend zone, to feel like you're in that friend zone territory much quicker than relying only on those face-to-face gatherings. I know we always hear phones and we're like, okay, well then we got to text and go back and forth or just comment on social media. That in some ways sometimes has that same effect too. So that can be a nice practical way to get in some kind of nurturing reps without having to figure out a face-to-face when that's not happening, maybe consistently with however you know those connections. Uh Yeah, I think that's a good one. Yeah. And then the final one I like to remind moms about is that the bar is lowered in motherhood around friendship. So many moms that I work with are worried. It's not that they worry they don't have time for friendship. They worry they don't have time to be a good friend. I think we all come up with these ideas of what a good friend is. In my mind, good friends remember birthdays. They're really good about checking in. And like, those are things that can feel really hard, particularly in new motherhood. Mm. That feels like a lot potentially for some people. And to be able to do that for multiple friends can feel even more overwhelming. So then to think about, well, if I had new friends, I don't even have time for my current friends. How am I going to show up for them in the same way as I'm showing up for my ride or die friendships? So I just like to remind moms, one of the questions I encourage them to ask is think about the level of support you have to give today. For me, that is, I'm not going to remember your birthday. I'm not. That's not my strength in friendship. However, when you are with me, I am with you. I am present. I am attentive. I am a good listener. I provide good support, good encouragement. I check in occasionally. I'm not going to forget about you if you're not in my face, but I'm not overly attentive when we're not seeing each other consistently. So when I think about what I want that in a friend right now, I think absolutely yes. So sometimes when you flip that and ask yourself that question, would I like a friend that could give that type of support? Usually the answer is yes. What we do have to give is often what we'd like to receive too. So it's okay for that bar to be lowered. In fact, it actually makes us feel, I don't know, less crazy. Like we're all juggling. We all get it. We all have these babies. Many of us have partners. Many of us have careers. Many of us are managing a home. If my friends don't get that and don't get that I'm occasionally not going to text back right away, I will text you back, but you will not hear from me immediately. I can't be a part of a friendship that would require that of me at this season in my life. I need friends who give grace. And I would say most of us are out there giving grace because we need it too. And so have no fear. The bar is lowered. You don't have to worry about showing up as the friend you were pre-kids because that's just not going to be sustainable in this season of motherhood. Yeah. And I think getting honest with each other too, 
And as you say, letting your friends yeah. know where you're at. If they're not in that space, well, just text them occasionally. It takes two to tango and it takes time to make a village. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So I could talk to you forever about this topic. I've moved a lot, but I've been in the same place now for five years and it takes time to make friends. Yeah, it definitely takes time, but it doesn't take as much time as we sometimes think. Something I work with a lot moms on too is just being really clear on where you're going to put your limited friendship energy because you might always feel like you're constantly putting yourself out there everywhere you go and it's exhausting and you don't feel like you're getting much traction. But if you decide, okay, I'm going to show up to this workout class once a week, I'm going to see if this mom is willing to do a play date once a month. If you choose one to three things, usually when I move and have to start from scratch, I will force myself to do three different things. But at other points in time, it's like, nah, one thing is fine or putting energy in one spot and naming that being super clear about the fact that you're doing that can be really freeing because Mm -hmm. then you can show up to all these other spaces and not stress about talking to everyone or making a friend or making small talk because you know that you're investing in some other spaces. And that's really helpful, particularly for introverts or for people who are not naturally wanting to constantly engage and use that energy up everywhere all day, every day, when you can be mindful about where you're going to spend that energy and it will pay off if you just stay committed and keep showing up in that one space. And then you can guilt-free the rest of the time. Go shop at the grocery store. Don't worry about smiling at strangers when you're there. It's fine. Grocery store is not the best place to meet people anyway. You're putting in good time in, in other places. And that just helps, I think, too, with the long game of it and seeing traction faster because you're focusing in specific areas too. Do you keep in touch with your friends from other areas? Do you still keep in touch with the friends you've made in other states? Yes and no. So I definitely am more limited in my communication with my friends from Pennsylvania now. However, we're going to go there this summer and we'll absolutely be reconnecting with them. Mm -hmm. Right now, we've just left Texas. That's pretty new still, still under a year old. And we just got back from a trip where we stayed with our friends, saw all the other friends, Voxer and Marco Polo. Those are two apps that I use to stay in communication with my friends who are long distance. So I probably Voxer with my Texas friends right now once a month. And so I'm still fairly in communication with them. I also went to college in California, which is a state, again, very far away. And I Voxer probably weekly with four of those girls. And oddly enough, three of my really good friends, two of which are here in Minnesota with me, they live really nearby. And one of them who has just moved to a different state. The three of us also Voxer Weekly. I actually talk to them on this app more than I see them in person, even though they're local friends. So I spend a lot of time with my friends every day, even if I don't see them, because these apps, I call Voxer the best app for moms, because you can talk to your friends on your own time. And that is what I found so hard personally about the little years was I had these babies who would sleep a lot, but I never exactly knew when they were going to sleep. And I just felt like my time was never certain. Like I wasn't sure Mm -hmm. when I would be available for uninterrupted time. So with Voxer, it allows me to listen to my friends on my own time and allows me to talk to them on my own time. And it sounds weird if you've never tried it. It's like, is this just voice messages? It is, but it truly feels like you're talking to your friends. And it's been a game changer for me. I find it to be so great, particularly on snow days when you're snowed in and can't leave the house and can't see people. It's so nice to have that human connection with friends. So that's a long answer to say yes. I definitely still do talk to them, but it has shifted and changed. I'm not the same support friend for them anymore. And they are not that for me anymore now that we're not living within five to 10 minutes of each other, but for sure, we're going to still keep up on each other's lives. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's always a little bit of a grieving process of, I know this isn't goodbye. I know this isn't like, we're not going to be friends anymore, but the friendship is going to shift. And that's sad. 
there's definitely a sadness to that for sure. Mm, yeah, but if you still keep in contact, that's mm-hmm. good. And that's what I liked about the name of your podcast, the mm-hmm. Connected Mum Life podcast, because you're still connected even if you're miles away. So if yeah, anybody absolutely. wants to get in touch with you and find out more about you, how do they go about doing that? Yeah. So the website, theconnectedmomlife.com will tell you all the ways that we could connect either through the podcast or if you're interested in joining our community where we support other moms that are seeking in real life friendships. And there's also where you'll find a lot of freebies too to support you. I offer a lot of free support. I mentioned that I ask for phone numbers early on when I meet someone. I have a kind of a free guide where you can get kind of exactly what to say to make it not weird or creepy. So you can get that for free at the website. And then I tend to hang out most on Instagram at The Connected Mom Life as well. Well, thank you, Emily, for being on this podcast. I think you've given some uh, some very valuable tips. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. I've talked with a number of ladies on First Time Mams Chat about the whole Finding Your Village topic. But I really liked what Emily had to share and the way she explained her process of making lasting friendships. I highly recommend checking out Emily's website, podcast, and social media. I've included links to these in the show notes, as well as to some freebies that Emily offers, including a quiz, which will help you find out what's getting in the way of the friendship circle you crave. You can access these show notes by going to mybabymassage.net forward slash podcast forward slash one two two that's mybabymassage.net forward slash podcast forward slash one two two each week i work hard to produce episodes that are helpful to mums commencing their parenting journey and i was delighted to find out that i had been included in feedspot 10 best first time mums podcasts worth listening to in 2023 i've included a link to this listing In the show notes, it includes other podcasts that you may find of interest and support in your journey. Next week, I'm chatting with lactation consultant J. Nell Millerell on topics including baby's weight, after births and breastfeeding. Be sure to listen to this episode when it comes out and please subscribe to First Time Mums Chat via your favourite platform so that you get quick and easy access to all our episodes when they are live.